You may have realized that being healthy feels different than it did in the past now that you're over 50. If you want to maximize your health potential but don't have time to read through overwhelming pages of Google links, this is the show for you. Welcome to Healthy Tips After 50. We love doing the research, finding solutions, talking to health experts, and learning what works and what doesn't. Now, your host. She spent the last 25 years dedicated to feeling her best and is here to share her best findings with you, Susan Rosen. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Susan Rosen. And my guest today is someone who I actually got to meet through some other programs that we've both been a part of. And her name is Christine Mander. I hope I pronounced that right. Mander? Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, and Christine <clears throat> is an Alexander Technique teacher. And she's been doing that, I, have, I, I don't even have the number of years on here, is about four about years? three years, yeah. Three years, four years, okay. Well, I, yes, I qualified about three years ago. So. Okay, okay. And so, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the Alexander Technique and whatever else comes up in the conversation and, and how the technique among other things can help those of us who are you know older than 50 plus or minus you know large numbers or not so anyways welcome christine it's a pleasure to have you here thank you show. Nice you. yeah do so you want to tell us a little bit how to lay a little bit of a basis for the alexander technique and maybe you can tell us how you kind of got involved in that and and what you uh what you did with it during the pandemic okay okay well um i i'd heard about the, the alexander technique as being something that was good for back pain and another neck pain and things like that so um quite a few years ago now i i used to suffer a lot with my back just going out for no apparently no reason and, and lots of neck pain and things. So I, I started having lessons. Um, and I think the the thing that really um, got me hooked was that my first lesson, I'd, I, I was in quite a stressful job at the time or, or something that I perceived to be quite stressful. Um, and I had a lot of, you know, sort of um, indigestion, um, chest pains that were there sort of most of the time. Um, and I had my first lesson and it wasn't anything I'd mentioned to the teacher or anything like that. And I just remember walking out of the lesson and just feeling like, oh, oh, that's gone. That pain is gone. <laughs> and so that there was that was the real sort of, oh, there's, you know, there's something interesting here. I'm, I'm going to carry on with it. So so I did carry on and I had uh, quite a few lessons with that that teacher. Um, and then I sort of stopped for a while. And then a little bit later on, I started to get that, you know, that hump that you get when you get to a bit sort of <laughs> 50s in the back of your neck. Here. And I thought, oh, the Alexander Technique, I'll, I'll have a go at that again. And so I um, went to a, a, a completely different teacher, taught in, in quite a different way, actually, oh. but I also connected with her too. Um, and the interesting, couple of interesting things I found with the lessons with her. Uh, one was uh, part of the lesson is to lie on um, a couch with your knees up and your head with, uh, on some books. So you're basically um, lengthening your, your back and allowing the, the couch to take your weight and allowing you to, to oh. stretch out. And... and um, I started off with a, you know, she put a number of books under my head. And after I'd been going for a few weeks, she said, oh, I don't think we need so many books now. And so she took some of the books away. And um, around about this time, seemingly not connected at all, I started to get really um, pains in the back of my head. And I was quite, you know, like headache. And I was quite worried about it. And I went to the doctor and the doctor didn't seem particularly interested about it. And as I was coming out, I suddenly thought, oh, I've been obviously been changing in some way because I don't need so many books on the table, but I'm still using the same number of pillows when I go home to sleep. 
<laughs> and so I got rid of one of my pillows and the neck pain went, you know, the, the head pain went just like that. So mm -hmm. um, so I, I've, I had a sort of um, background of this. Now, oh, oh, sorry, one other thing with, with that particular teacher. Um, I was lying on the lying on the table. She was working with me on the table. It's not all we do, but that's one of the things. And um, she said, "Oh, you just released in your back." And I was there was no way I was lying flat on my back. There's no way she could have seen that. No. Um, and so I I said to her, how, "How did you know?" And she said, "Oh, because I felt it in my own back." And at that oh, point, wow. I saw something really. <laughs> really interesting going on here and I think that's probably what started the little seed of I'm going to try to do this at some point you know because this this sounds really interesting so um so that that was my uh, my sort of introduction to it um but uh, generally as a thing I mean Alexander was um he was around I was born in um mid 1800s 1860 something I think and died in 1955 Oh, and um that's a good year mm, he was that's when i was born oh uh, yeah yeah i yeah, say yeah. that yeah good <laughs> um but he was um he was an an act well he was an actor an aspiring actor i'm not sure he was um i think he started off as a, just an amateur actor but he was doing recitations shakespearean recitations in in australia he was in australia um and he found that um when he was doing his his production his um on stage that he was losing his voice and he went to the doctors and doctors basically said um, rest your voice and it'll be fine uh, and so he did and you know, the, the um the hoarseness went away his voice came back but as soon as he went back on stage again he lost his voice again and so he started to realize that there must be something he was doing to cause it because it didn't happen normally. And so he started a long investigation with lots of mirrors and all sorts of things, working out exactly what he was doing when he was um, declaiming on stage rather than when he was just talking. And he found that, you know, he was tensing up, he was um, throwing his head back, there was all sorts of things he was doing. That he had no idea until he looked in the mirror that he was doing when he um, when he was doing his performances um, and he went through a whole process and he realized that um, just knowing about it wasn't quite enough he still the habit was so ingrained that as soon as he started he went into this this habitual pattern and so he um, you know started to introduce it almost like a um, a halt, a, a stopping, so that he could eventually get to the point where he didn't go into this this habitual pattern. Hmm. Um, and he started working with other people and got to be quite, you know, well known for uh -huh. working. So that that that's where it um, where it comes from. Um, and one of the things that I've found quite fascinating is, is the sort of range of ways that people teach because there's lots of different <clears throat> like extremes if you like and um, you know some people focus very much on the uh, physical the mechanical advantage so the things that you do that make it practically easier to move uh -huh. <laughs> and then some people focus more on the the, the, um, the psychological end of it Oh, okay. um, and you know the sort of the habits and um the patterns that come with the things that we're i suppose suppressing in ourselves mm, yeah. and but my school where i trained was very much on the psychological end of it um, the head of training there um anthony kingsley is um psychotherapist too so he, he was very much focused on that but not everybody is so there is mm -hmm. there is a range of but when I um when I was training one of the things I was looking at is what why in a way why I'd ended up with back pain and neck pain mm -hmm. and one of the things one of the patterns that I was in um I think arose because um my mum my mum was five foot um I'm it's difficult to tell me but I'm about five foot eight nine Oh, wow. okay. My dad was six foot two, 
but my mum's sisters who we spent you know most of our time with and their husbands and my cousins were all tiny so they're all sort of you know five foot so I spent a lot of my time you know going around like this I didn't want to be that tall right and my mum would say stand up straight so <laughs> so I do a sort of contortion to get back to being straight and so these things become habits for us oh that yeah we do and we don't know we're doing it and it might be that it's just um we're protecting ourselves you know there can be a habit mm. of where you're you're folding in on yourself you're collapsing mm-hmm. or you might have had a habit where somebody's you've been told all your life sit up straight you know sit up straight and do that sort of <laughs> whole thing so we incorporate these these patterns and some of them are protecting us from emotions and things we don't want to feel as well um okay so um in the training you 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 quite often find that people will get emotional when you're working with them, when you're uh, oh. taking them into different positions that they don't normally go into. It's, um, it's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. kind of like an, it's kind of like an emotional energy. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of caught up yeah. in our bodies and you're helping to release that. Yeah. No, you know, yes. Or, or habits. I don't, I mean, I, it's funny cause I was, I was looking at this. I, I, there is a sort of, um thing I think that people think that that things are actually stored in your body but I'm not sure whether it's that or whether it's just Mm -hmm. the habits that we do Mm. tend to put us in the same positions that then cause you know problems um but yeah so it's all sort of connected so yeah Um, one of the most um interesting things for me I mean we train um for three years Mm -hmm. Um, to teach and a lot of that a lot of that time really is getting still in yourself so that what you're mm-hmm. you're not transmitting your sort of angst or, or habits yeah. to someone else you're you're allowing them to be mm. in the space to, to open up mm-hmm. um, and what was really fascinating was um because we don't we don't always see the changes in ourselves do we but no no rarely change see the changes in other people and so over the three years it it was just fascinating watching how people change so you know people who might have been quite um insecure possibly me or me um you know not that outgoing um became more outgoing, more comfortable in everybody I think became more comfortable in their own skin, I would say. Uh-huh. But then you have the people who are very um hyper and very who'd calm down. So it's like we all came we came back to a sort of midpoint really. Uh, right. back into yeah. Maybe uh-huh. so, I'm saying yeah. yeah. Um and that's both um both a physical thing and a psychological thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No that that makes a lot of sense. Mm. And um, I mean, that's one of one of Alexander's um, things was that we quite often talk about, you know, mind and body being connected. Mm-hmm. But he went beyond that to say they're one. There is no separation. Yeah. Um, that it's all one. We're going back to wholeness, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yes, that was. Um, and also, obviously, how we use our body. So the, the habits that we have and the patterns that we get into affects how our body functions so going back to you, what you were saying about you know the older older people if they've had these habits for a long time yeah if you've got a habit of slumping that's going to leave less space for your organs to function mm-hmm. oh yes yeah yes so um you know that that can have effects on you or if you're used to being you know yeah. like that then eventually that becomes a pattern that sort of sticks um, yeah so I think that's um yeah so it's in, it, interesting to see when they, those start to drop away a little bit and... yeah and I can see where particularly even even more so the last four or five years but you know even just like the last 10 or 15 years um with everyone getting hooked on their computers, mm-hmm. 
And I don't know about you, I sit down, oh, I'm just going to do take care of this. And then I'm going to go take care of this other thing. And, and an hour and a half goes by. Mm. And I've been sitting. Mm. And depending on what I'm doing, I may or may not be sitting up straight. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'll be lucky if I'm not sitting like this, because yeah. I, I yeah. find myself to be doing that, mm. you know, quite often. And it's um, mm. so I think our the change in our lifestyles mm. has made a big difference yeah. as well. Mm. And I think, the, I mean, the, the big one is looking at phones, you know, being like this. Oh, right? Yes, that drives me crazy. Mm. I don't do that, but but <laughs> yeah. the other people, I don't, know how, I don't know how many older people do that, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think, you know, younger people are going to get a... Oh, yeah. Catch yeah, up with all... them and make sure. Yeah. I, one of the things I um, I like to do because it's it's quite surprising for people is I have a weight um, a five five kilogram weight. Uh huh. I hand to people and say just just hold that and so that's the weight roundabout between four and a half five kilos is the weight of your head. Uh -huh. <laughs> so if if you're not if it's not balanced on your spine, then that's a lot of weight to be you know. Mm. yeah 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 to be out of um, <laughs> whatever yeah. out of alignment yeah 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 so, yeah, yeah. Mm. and then people wonder why they have headaches or mm. shoulder aches or back aches or arm aches because it all yeah it affects yeah. everything yeah absolutely mm. yeah. um so in in the the lessons themselves. I mean, normally You're making me think I have to sit up straight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I have to. I always have to remind myself. I have one shoulder that's lower than the other, and I'm constantly like, "Okay, go back up. Go back up." <laughs> that's one of the um, <laughs> one of the worst things about um, telling people you're a teacher if they know anything about it. They immediately go, <laughs> and you're like, "No, that's not what we're saying." <laughs> <laughs> i love it yes yes but i will say i do feel better when i sit up straight yeah and get myself if you find just find your sitting bones that's good find your sitting bones <laughs> sitting bones maybe the bones in the back huh on your on your bottom just underneath yeah you. yeah yeah they're good good for balance um yes yeah, so i did say one uh-huh just to say a little bit about how how we teach because it's yeah it, that'd be good. It's quite sort of um yeah it's, it's all quite paradoxical really it's like a lot of these things but um in practically how we teach is hands-on people um so we will um, move people and, and quite often it's um in and out of a chair so to get people from sitting mm. to standing um Sometimes it'll be against a wall or it might be you know, getting people to go up onto their toes or walking around the room or whatever. Some some teachers actually have saddles. We never did that, but you know, have horse, horse riding saddles and do that. Mm -hmm. um, but what um, some of what we're doing now is, you know, the thing I was talking about before is the mechanical advantage. So mm -hmm. quite often when we're trying to get out of a, a chair, we we use more energy, more effort than we need to. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly older people will sort of do that, you know, like pushing themselves out of the chair. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a, a lovely moment with a, with a student of mine. Um, I'm, I'm sure she won't mind me saying she's in, uh, she's in her seventies. So she's, mm -hmm. you know, I just asked her to, to stand up from the stool and she put her hands down in the stool and pushed herself up and it was quite an effort for her. Um, and I was working with her to, to get her to bend from her hips rather than at the, you know, the waist like this, but to bend forward from the hips, keeping your back pretty straight. Um, okay. and, then, okay. and then to get to a point where your weight is over your feet and if you do that with help, the first time with help, and if you put your heels into the ground, you can stand up quite easily. It's, you know, mm -hmm. and it was beautiful because she she just looked at me and said, I did it. <laughs> yeah, I did it. I can do it. <laughs> she 
she's just that look of joy on her face that she <laughs> she would got out of the chair. And also, um, if you do that, you don't you don't get quite the same strain in your lower back, which is quite uh, in the lower back. Um, I know when I was, um, I think it was probably when I was training to be a teacher. And I remember distinctly the first time I stood up and thought I, I didn't notice anything in my back. There was no, because no, normally I would feel a twinge when I stood uh -huh, up. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. No, no. Um, so yeah, that, that's um, it's a, a, nice, a nice feeling. Yeah. Um, feeling. Um, but then also, as I mentioned before, we have um, work on the table, on, on the couch, mm. really. We lie. We, we move people. Um, part of the, of the thing is to allow, to get people to give us control in a way so that we move them and they're not, mm, yeah. it's an experience of moving without, um, without them doing anything. And that's very difficult for some people. To oh my them. God, yes. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, as people do, then they, it changes their, mm -hmm. their experience of movement, which is, which is a real. Yeah. So, um, as I was saying, maybe most of what we do is physically with someone. Mm -hmm. So physically touching them with the hands. Right. Quite often, hands on the on the heart space as well, which is not something that that uh. people experience very often. And I think for some people, actually, just being touched like that is mm -hmm. you know wasn't mm -hmm. a thing to do. Yeah. Um. But I think you mentioned about the, you know, the lockdown and the, the experimenting because we sort of thought, well, that's it. You know, we can't work at all during lockdown. Um, and, and my, um, I'd actually finished my training, um, but my, uh, at the training school where I trained, they, uh, the head of training decided to, to do an online course. So I did a postgrad of working online. And that was quite interesting because you sort of think, there's nothing we can do because we haven't we were so used to using our hands and there's nothing you know but it did work with your voice you know and just um wow. talking to people in in a way that's that's not oh just get on with it you know sort of way but uh just move and you know when you've got that uh -huh. that still uh -huh. in your voice you're transmitting that as well um, and uh i Another lady that um, a friend of mine that I trained with, we we actually met up a couple of times a week to just practice on each other, um, you know, working just just with our voices just over Zoom, and it was um, surprisingly effective, actually, surprisingly effective. Just when you think that it wouldn't work, but it did. Yeah, it is. It is interesting. Um, and I think it's the same thing I found <clears throat> with, um, you know, which isn't quite so hands-on kind of thing, but even just in coaching, mm. right? Because a lot of times I'll just kind of slow down and, mm. and, and, and people get that. Mm. There's that, that connection that you can still make. Yeah. which is really so interesting mm -hmm. it just shows the the power of whatever that is i mean i don't mm -hmm. i i don't have the vocabulary to yeah. to actually describe it in real terms mm -hmm. um but there's just the connection yeah 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 i think the um in a way teaching because I've, I've done um i've done a bit of coach training as well we met but right. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a, there is a big similarity in, um, with the Alexander technique in a way you're physically holding the space for someone yeah. in the same way that you are, as you were saying, in the coach, uh -huh. you're giving them permission, if you like, to just take up space and be, yeah, be there. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And not have to be in control. Yeah, yeah. It's um there's there's a, there's a lot of similarities I think between the two. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, you know, and at the same time, there's also a number of other modalities, if you want to call it that. You know, that that work on the same premise. Mm -hmm. 
you know, which is which is kind of neat as mm-hmm. well. So it's not it's not just coaching. It's not just Alexander technique. There's just mm-hmm. so many other physical, um, historical, mm-hmm. right kinds of practices. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, so tell us a little bit more. Um, I know you had told me a little bit uh, previously, but um, you know, just about about if people were going to go to an Alexander Technique person, or to you, for that mm-hmm. matter, or you know, or online or in person, if they happen to be in Chester, mm-hmm. um, the um, you know what what. What would they need to be, which, yeah, it's not a good way of putting it. Um, tell me a little bit about what you would do, right? I was, I kept thinking of the word expectations, but I don't think that's the right, that's not the right word I'm trying to find, you know, but it is that kind of, <clears throat> so, so maybe I'll put it in two, two ways. What kind of expectations do you think people arrive with mm-hmm. that, they soon realize are wrong. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, and <laughs> what do you actually do? Okay. And you were giving me some examples, so that that sort of yeah, thing, okay. so people have a, a feel for, okay, mm-hmm. so she's an Alexander Technique person, and what does she do? And <laughs> when should I think about going? Yeah, you okay. know. Okay. Um, I think um, it's interesting. Look, look, people come for lots of different reasons, and um, one of the biggest is pain. Mm. And there was a, a study done some years ago about back pain in Alexandra, and it came out very well in comparison oh. to it. Um, it's also um, a lot of um, drama schools and a lot of um, music colleges have in house. Alexander teachers because they've realized that it helps with performance, helps uh-huh. with anxiety, but it was, you know, helps with yeah. and it helps yeah. with not um getting not damaging your body through mm. pain. I think particularly mm. things like violinists have a lot of you know issues with shoulders and well, so so it's it's gone that way. Um it, it's in that arena quite a bit as well. Uh-huh. But I think for People coming to an individual Alexander teacher, it tends tends to be pain, probably is the most. Um, and I think the probably the most it isn't it isn't that we're going to fix you. <laughs> and I think that's probably the, you know, that it, it's going to be a quick fix or it's going to be, which obviously is the same with a lot of things, isn't it? You think um, yeah. Uh, so it is a training it isn't a treatment mm. and it so it, if you fit it into a sort of I suppose a hierarchy you might go to see um, an osteopath or a uh-huh. physio because you've got an injury that you you know needs work on at that, that point in time whereas an Alexander technique teacher is a little bit further down the line of let's find a way of moving and being in the world so we don't cause that problem again um, so I think that's where it fits more into the picture although people could I mean it, it as I said with my back it will uh-huh. it will relieve it can relieve pain uh-huh. um, but it's not um it's not we're not fixing that if you like it's just right. different ways of, of moving and being in the world and 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 uh-huh ease of movement lack of tension in their bodies you know a lot of the things that are causing the pain in the first place right right yeah, yeah. um and so it, it it is um you know some people will come for like 10 or 20 lessons and then maybe have top-up lessons every every now and then some people keep you know keep going uh-huh. they, they like it um but it's um yeah, I think the biggest thing to say is it isn't a treatment. Uh-huh. That's not what we're doing. Yeah. We are training you to be. Okay. okay. To is it kind Maybe of like be in a different way? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going to say it's kind of training people to be <clears throat> how they should be 
and not necessarily the way they're existing in the world right yeah. now yeah, to, 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 to let go of some of the habits that they uh -huh. yeah picked up along the way and we all do we all do <laughs> yeah and particularly yeah. when we get to be over 50 or 60 yeah <laughs> yes yes because what we what we could bounce back from when we were in our 30s is is nowhere close to what we can do now yeah yeah I think you, yes and, and there's also I suppose a build-up isn't there if you've been doing something that way for a long time um yeah but, uh, yeah it's uh, it's I mean, practically, the, the lessons are usually um, half an hour to 45 minutes, depends on the uh -huh. teacher. Um, and it, it comprises, it will usually be um, getting in and out of the chair and, 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 and moving people in and out of the chair probably multiple times to, uh -huh. to give yeah. them the experience of, um, of moving with ease. Okay. And then uh, a period on the on the table usually as well. Some for some people, um, you know, if someone's in a real really struggling, you might only do table to start off with. Okay. So you, it depends on the it very much depends on the person who comes. Yeah. No, and that and that makes a lot of sense. And then when you do that online, how do you um, how do you do that? Or is it mostly I, with people you've started with? I beforehand. don't personally I don't work with people online now oh, because okay. I, I prefer to work um, mm. thing, but lots of people do um some someone I trained with is working exclusively online oh, um, okay so and and that so that's not because I think originally we thought oh well it'll be okay for people who've had some hands-on work and then they yeah. work they work online but that doesn't necessarily seem to need to be the case I, you know I, I definitely uh -huh. people who are, are working with someone who's who's never never had a physical lesson so. interesting interesting yeah, yeah. and I and as in some there's, a, there's an interesting thing about that as well because I think sometimes people can think that you're doing something with your hands um that you are sort of fixing them in some way or you are treating them. Yes. Yes. If you're doing it online, yeah. can't be that. Right. <laughs> so I, I think that it can make people possibly um more self-reliant than if yeah. they're yeah. so, they, so it's in, in an interesting yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be a uh, it's an interesting as uh, they say conundrum, I guess. Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 But personally, I like being in the room with someone, so. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm assuming you probably just need to have like a, a couch or something like that. or Because most people aren't going to have a table. Oh, well, I, like people you guys to, would. Um, normally, you'll go to the person who's, who's teaching who will have a, a setup. Oh, yeah, no, no, I meant online. Oh, online, sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it could be on the floor, depending on how. Oh, um, it, yeah. yeah. I didn't think about that. Agile people, <laughs> are, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so yeah. I mean, we do, um, we do work um, when we've done online sessions ourselves. We do them. We can do work on the floor. So. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was just thinking the couch and stuff would be the same as maybe a a a, a bench or whatever. You know. Yeah. The, you, because people, if you want them to stand, if you want them to stand up for you know for mm -hmm. sitting and stuff. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. You need to really need a. Um, I mean, a stool is ideal. A, a, a wooden ah, stool. No okay. Padding. and it's for for um, lying lying down work. It's mm -hmm. it's better to be on the floor than a, like a squidgy couch or a bed. No, that makes sense. It doesn't give you the the support right. that you yeah that's useful really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And huh. a lot of um, I'm 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 very bad because I don't do it regularly. But a, a lot of um, actually a lot of people will say to their students, um, just lie down yourself for ten minutes a day, and that will make it, that will make quite a bit of difference. Uh huh. But I, I, yes, 
I'm that's one of the things do what I <laughs> do what I say, not what I do. Ah, got it. Because oh, okay. I'm I'm not very good at doing that. But uh, but yeah, I mean people I know, you know, friends who do it say, so, yeah, I know it really really does make a difference. So. Huh. So do you put something under your head or what do you usually some paperback books so um you know so they're a little bit squidgy but not not very uh-huh um, and get your head so that um you're not you know you're not sort of squidging up here but also you're not not uh, yeah right I was just gonna say so yeah pretty much straight you know so your head's straight, uh-huh. neck uh-huh. straight. yeah yeah interesting yeah huh and then- so that that's something anybody can do anyway yeah yeah i'll have to try that because it does um it it allows your your back just to um right yeah well and it and it it does make sense because i mean even when we're standing up straight our head is not back at Mm. at even with the back of your back Mm. right yeah yeah it's in the middle i mean that's the whole idea of how we're built (laughs) yeah yeah, so that's how it was an interesting thing because sometimes we'll point out um, how you know how the skeleton is because sometimes people don't realise that the uh, the top of the spine is actually up here, you know, as you're right, <laughs> and so you know that that's you tend to think you know people think it stops sort of around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually, goes all the way up there where you balance on the on the top of the spine. So. Yeah, that and that is funny. Yeah. Yeah, I hadn't even mm-hmm. thought about it myself because it, one mm-hmm. way or the other, I never, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's not um, something you think about until you start. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, but it makes it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because your head is sitting on your neck. Mm-hmm. That's the whole cervix or yeah. cervical, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, we do have. I don't have one here, but I do have um, another place, a, a skeleton. So ah, you, you know, some people uh-huh. will be very very keen on showing people you know how, how we actually fit together <laughs> where your hips are you know your hips are where you think they are okay okay mm-hmm. okay yeah yeah which is which is one of the things that I learned a long time ago which is that actually standing up straight is not standing up straight mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. the the bet because really your butt and your hips kind of go out mm. a little bit yeah, and your knees actually, really ought to be really ought to be bent not mm-hmm. not standing there with your knees going yeah and flexed inward or whatever backward or or whatever which is the way particularly women mm. men men aren't taught that but women are i don't know whether it's it's actual teaching or it's just mm-hmm. you we learn it from just being around other women it just gets handed to <laughs> you know. it's like when um one of my, one of my habits which is quite a common one when i was um standing up or sitting down was for my knees to go together uh, so even if my legs weren't together my knees would go in okay. uh-huh uh-huh <laughs> as women we're very you know we're sort of taught to yeah <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly for especially for those of us who who um who had to wear dresses and skirts yeah. to school right yeah. Yeah. yeah so that that was a that was a habit that I didn't know I had I mean that's the other thing as well we we don't know we have these habits it's true yeah you know our, our, um, yeah. because our our body eventually adapts to them so it doesn't tell us they're wrong anymore you know, so mm. we, yeah we have, uh, our, our sensory feedback doesn't tell us so. yeah yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, maybe on that, on that note, it's a good, uh, a good kind of wrap up that, uh, um, you know, I don't know if you want it because you've given, you've given a lot of hints to people to uh, yeah. suggestions of, of what to do mm-hmm. and what to look for Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. to a certain degree. I don't know if there's any last, last suggestions you want to make, or if we should just, uh, yeah, just I, just, wrap I mean, it up. You're not if you can't, you know, you you're not able to get to a teacher or whatever. I think the mm-hmm. like lying down is 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 useful. I know I was being facetious before, but it is it is a useful thing to do. Um, yeah. But the, you know, at the end of a long day, it's, it gives gives you that uh, you know a bit of rest. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Do you put anything under your knees when you do that, or just um... you have your knees up? Sorry, so your ah, your feet are flat on the ground. Sorry, I didn't explain that. Oh, okay. so your back is flat. Mm -hmm. Your knees pointing up to the ceiling. Okay. And, and not and not like this, but like that. Yes, yes, a little in a way, and and you don't don't go to sleep. Be con, you know, be conscious. Um, yeah. But just see how much you can let go of. How much you're holding, you don't need to hold. Ah, uh, okay, okay, yeah, just relax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not not a clock okay. relaxed, but a you know. No, I no. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Let go of the tightness. How's that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then you suggested maybe a pipe paperback book or something. Yeah, a couple of books. So just so so your neck is is parallel with the ground, really. Okay. But you can tell if you, you know, if you like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah whether you're like, the, yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, Once you start doing it, it becomes obvious, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, um, we can we can put some emails or whatever, websites or whatever in the show notes if people want to follow up with trying to find someone in their, in their area. Yes, I, there's a, um, there's an organization in the uh -huh. UK called STAT, um, and I think the American one is called AMSTAT. So I'll, I'll get, okay. I can give you those, yeah. So, yeah, because that will give a, a look up for, for teachers in your area. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, that'd be good. I'll put that in the show notes. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And I'm going to do my usual closing, which is that neither of us are doctors. And none of this should be considered as medical advice because it's not. So uh, if you're having any sort of medical issues, please go to the hospital or to your own doctor and get that taken care of. Um, and with all that being said, thank you very much, Christine, for coming on. It was a very enlightening and, and enjoyable conversation. And to everybody else, I will see you all next week. This has been Healthy Tips After 50 with Susan Rosen. To stay on the cutting edge of the most effective health strategies, subscribe to this podcast and let us know what you thought of the show with a comment or like on iTunes. Visit HealthyTipsAfter50.com for this episode's show notes, more resources, and free offers.